My dear fellow Kenyans, especially those who reside in the beautiful motherland, this morning wake up to a very different country. Even if this thing is yet to touch you or reach you, yeah, kindly take note it is here. Many of you have wanted me to make this video to give an overview of what the impact and consequences of the policies of the William Samoy Ruto government and especially the finance bill 2023 yeah, which in the words of a legislator is the breaking point yeah, the breaking point of what? the breaking point of a very different Kenya. Some people are even using the strong word revolution. But let us slow down and look at the harsh realities before we even attempt to interrogate that deadly word that people are using very carelessly and generally. And please don't misunderstand me. I'm not saying it will not come. No. I'm just giving you the reality that in my opinion that tell me that we can't avoid going there. Okay? But as you know, my analysis is always mosmos based on evidence on the ground. On this channel, I try very hard to avoid sweeping emotional statements based on very little. So what I'm doing on my show today is giving you the effects, the impact, yeah, in numbered points. You can then arrive at your own very obvious conclusion. Stay with me and towards the tail end, I will tell you what we need to do as individuals, every single one of us, that may meet with stiff resistance from your CS internal, who is also the deputy president of your republic, your dear wife. Look out for that one. Consequence number one is going to be food. Indeed, it is already food. Okay? Shortage of food and also high prices of the same food. Now, Kenyan's food supply chains are very unique and indeed very fascinating. And I don't want to bore you with my lectures yawasomi. <laughs> no. So I'll just tell you stories based on the reality on the ground that will very quickly illustrate what I'm trying to say. Why our food supply chains are very vulnerable to what is unfolding in Kenya today. They are vulnerable in a negative way that will impact very negatively on your food table wherever you are in Kenya today. Now we all know that Kitale is in the bread basket of Kenya. They grow a lot of maize. A lot of our maize comes from there. And the culture in this part of Kenya is they usually say, Unga ya pakiti ya duka sishibi, lazima ni siage mimi mwenyewe, posho milbanenos. And so what most ordinary Kenyans will do, they'll buy a gorogoro of maize, that's about 2 kg. Actually it's slightly more than 2 kgs. But after you've taken it to the posho mill, you'll get 2 kgs of unga. Now here's the interesting part. The cost of one gorogoro of maize yeah, is 280 currently in Kitale. Portion mill cost varies from between 10 shillings and 15 shillings. And you have your 2 kgs of unga. So total cost is 290 for 2 kg packet of unga. In Kitale, if you go to the shops to buy packaged unga of the same product, the cost will be higher. In Kitale, now in Mombasa, the cost of a packet of unga, yeah, good quality, is 260 shillings. So in other words, it is cheaper to buy unga in Mombasa, which is not known for growing maize. In fact, they hardly grow anything. They don't grow anything. It is cheaper to buy unga there 
than it is to buy it at the headquarters of Mahindi, the headquarters of maize, in Kitale. What? <laughs> Folks, this is where we have a huge looming problem. Because, in this particular instance, the reason for this would be that the grower of maize has decided, instead of transporting it all the way to Mombasa and other areas of Kenya, transport cost, especially because of the cost of fuel, they have decided to sell it close to where it is being produced. For a price as close as possible to what they'd have gotten if they had transported it elsewhere in the country with all the hassles. Bila Kizungumingi, in the days and weeks to come, this strange pricing, yeah, we should expect it all over the country. Yeah, triggered by situation where everybody is trying to survive, everybody is trying to adjust to the new high prices, to the new crazy market, to the economic depression that we've entered. And the most scary part of it all, is that this situation will also definitely produce serious shortages in some parts of the country and perhaps in many parts of the country. So food is going to be a major issue. Price and availability. Consequence number two, which is even more deadly, is hunger. Now hunger is linked to the first one, but it is different in that if you have money in your pocket, even if you can't find unga, you'll find something else to eat. You can't fail to find something else to eat. Yeah, hopefully. But the vast majority of Kenyans are not like that. They don't have money. They live from hand to mouth. And therefore the result will be hunger. I think it is not too difficult to see that. So let's quickly move on to the next point. Consequence number three uncontrolled crime crime waves okay we're already seeing that yeah people have to survive and a hungry man <laughs> thinks very differently from somebody who has had at least one square meal within 24 hours yeah those two people think very differently therefore crime and indeed we can already see will shoot up dramatically Consequence number four, a change in our politics and especially political rallies. And again, this is very easy to see. Can you imagine trying to give a speech to people who are hungry, people who have not eaten? How do you think that will work out? And this will impact both sides of the political divide, but especially the Kenya Kwanzaa government. Because you see the way things have panned out, all the blame is going to land on the government. To the ordinary people, the enemy is the government. To the ordinary people, the person taking money away from them and causing their suffering is the government. That's really what it is. So a dramatic change in our politics. Politicians will have to go to great expense to organize their security. To organize attendees who are paid or at least fed yeah, to be able to take up the microphone and tell us the gibberish they normally tell us. Consequence number five, a dramatic increase in suicides. Now we have seen this in all past economic depressions, especially the Great Depression in the 1930s in the United States of America. Now, a word of caution, you cannot take something which does not belong to you. Life, your life does not belong to you. It was given to you by Almighty God. And therefore, nobody has a right to take it away from you. Even you yourself. Consequence number six, a dramatic increase in divorces and breaking up of families. Now, we saw a bit of this during the pandemic, during the go and stay at home campaign. I'm sure most of you remember that in the year 2020. But that was just Kionjo. 
what is coming is going to be much bigger. Consequence number seven, a dramatic increase in con artists and con men. And already we can see this. Yeah, deals which are too good to be true. Yeah, online promises of making five hundred dollars pop in the next two seconds. Yeah, which people will fall for because people are desperate. People's thinking has changed. And what makes matters worse is that we know for a fact that some of our elected leaders are involved in what we call in this part of the world the wash wash business yeah that's conning at a higher level consequence number eight will be a culmination of all these things and other factors that will come into play as a result of the hard times and it is something called anarchy something very scary yeah that word looks very harmless but trust me this is something you don't even want to think about, let alone imagine. Now before we discuss what we all need to do, let me quickly tell you a story. Because there's nothing new under the sun. In the year 1905, in East Africa, something happened that has got some interesting similarities to what is unfolding right now in motherland Kenya. And many of you have read it in your history books. The Muzungu version. Yeah. And this is of course the Majimaji Rebellion, which happened in what is today Tanzania. Now, what were the main causes of the Majimaji Rebellion? There was the introduction of head taxes. Sounds familiar? Which happened in 1898. It had a huge impact. It made people suffer in Tanzania. This was introduced by the German colonial masters of that part of East Africa. And then people were forced to plant cotton. Yeah. Which I don't think is a very far cry. Yeah. From people being forced to have houses. Which I'm sure sounds familiar to all of us. Yeah. Now there are those who say that the whole problem of the Majimaji rebellion would have been easily avoided if the Germans did not have such a weak hold on their colony. It is said that they were not organized enough in managing their colony. Now anybody who knows Germans yeah, will quickly tell you Germans by nature are very organized people. They tend to do their things with precision. Yeah, and those of us Kenyans who have traveled to Germany or have had contact with the Germans I've never traveled to Germany myself but at least had contact with Germans will know precisely what I'm talking about. In my opinion, this allegation is nothing but hot air. Yeah, because there was something else at play here. And that is the terrain of the country called Tanzania, which has to be the nightmare of any administrator. Now, in the year 2019, I was very fortunate to go on a road trip that crisscrossed the nation called Tanzania yeah, and indeed went right through the middle of the country called Tanzania. Very beautiful country. But really the layout of Tanzania is one big, huge, unruly, unmanageable bush yeah, with a few towns scattered around the edges. That is the most accurate description of this huge country which is so huge that it is bigger than the country called Kenya and Uganda put together. And that unforgettable road trip, yeah, in 2019, even more vivid in my mind today, because it was the last road trip with my late wife, passed through some of the most dangerous roads I've ever seen in my entire life. Yeah, but also some of the most beautiful terrain I've ever seen since I was born. Can you imagine descending on a road for almost an hour? <laughs> From somewhere very high up to a valley that is so far your eyes can hardly see it. And you're constantly on your brakes so that you start smelling rubber somewhere halfway. True story. 
But we also saw some of the saddest contradictions in this life. In a city called Gaeta, where they mine precious gold. But I saw poverty that I have never ever seen anywhere else before. Crazy contradiction. And then at the end of that descent, you pass through a narrow bridge that you're not even sure you'll be able to cross safely. <laughs> I'm not kidding. And I believe you're getting a very clear picture from some of the photographs I'm sharing, which you can see on your screen, or which you've been seeing on your screen. So the Majimaji Rebellion started when a medicine man advised the people that he had a concussion of water, castor oil and millet seeds that would protect them from German bullets. And what you did not read in your history books is that the initial surge was very successful and there were huge Muzungu casualties because the people believed that this was actually working. Yeah? Some people tell me they even had evidence that it worked. As soon as a German shot them, the bullet turned into water, melted completely. And this caused so many other communities to quickly join in the rebellion. Yeah. Until one community tragically learned it didn't actually work, or maybe it didn't work for them. I believe the name of that tribe was the Ngoni, the Ngoni tribe. The history book tells us the casualties were in the region of 300,000. The truth is, there must have been over a million casualties. And a vast majority of them not even from bullets, but from starvation, lack of food. In my opinion, history is always a very good teacher and also helps you predict what is going to happen. And very accurately at that. Now what you and I need to do yeah, to prepare is to adjust. We need to adjust our lifestyles, adjust even the way we spend our money. We really have no option. And of course that will meet with huge resistance from those around you. Yeah, because the way we live these days, appearances are very important. What will the neighbors think? I have this image where I live, in the apartments where I live. People know that I'm not a small person. What will they now think when they see me adjusting to what is coming? I can't bear the shame, etc., etc. Well, I don't have much to tell you about that, except to say, that the shame of being forced by circumstances to adjust is much greater than the shame of adjusting early. And let me just leave it at that and pray for you. Yeah, because this disease of living your life for others is a terrible tragedy. This life is too short. You already have too many issues around your life to even contemplate worrying about what other people think. And you have only one life. Better leave it for yourself and nobody else. Now the crazy thing that is difficult to believe is that during the Great Depression, there are some people who came out of it. Billionaires with great fortunes. Big huge fortunes were built that resulted in families, rich families well known all over the world, that are still operating up to this day. Yeah. So there are people who benefit and the opportunities when there's great trouble. Yeah, that is a fact and history proves it to us beyond any doubt. And that is why I highly recommend my set of videos put together in the year 2019 on how to prosper in a gloomy economy. And today I've thrown in something else. An e-book I did over 20 years ago titled How to Turn Your Idle Hours into cash. Basically side hustles. Because I've realized there are many people who still have a good job. Things are not so bad. But you also need to prepare. And a side hustle is the perfect solution. Something you can do in your spare time. This ebook even goes into the core of all this. Finding the time for a side hustle. You will be amazed at the time you can be able to pull out of your busy schedule and put into a side hustle, you'll be totally amazed by the ideas in this ebook. Now I've thrown it in. If you've already ordered my How to Prosper in a Gloomy Economy, 
just shoot me an email i'll send you the ebook but anybody who's coming in right now it will be included okay folks we need to prepare we must prepare you can see details on your screens right now i have a very good offer yeah initially this particular set of videos in 2019 was going for 54 dollars so i highly recommend that you go for it yeah and even if you don't my strong recommendation and i'll keep on giving regular tips on my videos my strong recommendation is that you must must prepare until next time this is chris kumekoja